lessons. So when the kids go shopping, we bag them, we tag them, and then Strand will wrap them, and then they will bring the parents and go either pick them up here or, or go, go over to the funeral home and pick up the presents so that we can, instead of being a wall, Officer, Officer XYZ bought me this Christmas present. It's wrapped, it goes under a tree, family has a Christmas, it has a Christmas dinner where they can focus on that, but yet they also have a very good interaction with the law enforcement community. So there's a lot of really neat things happening for the first shot of the COP program this year that, that we did, and we jumped into it kind of late, so um, it's, been a, it's been a real fun project for me, and I know the mayor's been having fun. So we'll, we're still kind of winging it, I'll have bodies, volunteers, um, Numbers of, numbers of kids that we've got the list paired down to, I should have it all sorted by Thursday night. Is it 31 Hainesville families? No, it's 31 residents combined between Hainesville and Grace Lane. Is there, it, just off the top of my head, it sounds like we've done a great job, but uh, can we get maybe one of the school bus companies locally to just provide a bus to We already discussed that, but the, the real thing about shop and the cop is where you get the door to get in the squad. Right? The ideal thing is you want the squad. Yeah. You want the squad. I suggested that early on put all the kids into a bus. Do a police escort to Target, and uh, that's all. Maybe, yeah, I'm not maybe we can get one from Joliet prison bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, so that's how that's how we're gonna have it run um, so far. So it's still it's, it, the project came together real fast, real quick. So. Yeah. Well, Kevin, I just want to commend you. You've done a good job. You put a lot of effort because we did start late on this. So. And I have to I have to applaud the, the business community of Hainesville. As hard as times are. A lot of a lot of the different businesses, yeah, you know, without even blinking an eye, we just sat down and each other. So I can't complain. It's been a very positive experience. Right. Thank you for letting me do this. Another question: Do we know starting time? What time do we want the building open? Uh, we should probably have the building open here by seven because we're supposed to start at eight o'clock. But Grace okay. PD and all the all the police departments are going to have a have a roll call slash briefing at seven o'clock. They're all going to come over here and then they'll line the parking lot with cars so keep the families in the front and volunteers' cars in the back and they can run all the squad cars on the side like we did last year. Okay. All right. Terrific. Thank you. Okay. Wetlands and open spaces. Trustee Duberstein. Yes. I uh, had an article in the newsletter asking people for suggestions or comments about projects that we could consider for the new year. And I did get, um, I think about five different families contacted me with either questions or suggestions. And, um, and I've either emailed them in response or talked to them in every case. Um, and at some point we may go out with them to look at the areas that they were concerned about. Uh, our next meeting is the 4th of January, and at that time we will finalize the priority of the projects we're looking at for next year. Okay, thank you. Community Relations, Trustee Daramaski. Um, right now I am working on the budget process for and looking at a couple of different items that I want to try to get into the budget, considering we spent very little of my budget last year, I believe that should carry forward to me. Um, and uh, just a quick update on the website. We had, um, basically we were down a little bit on hits and traffic from last month. We also are still though averaging about 45% of people are still new to the website. So of the thousand plus hits we're getting, we're still getting 45% of those are from new visitors. Um, we just, for fun, I had some interesting little uh, New countries that popped up on our list, um, really? Romania, um, Hungary, El Salvador, and also we had China and France, which were on there before. Okay, <coughs> okay let's move on to business. Uh, number one is pretty easy, I think. It's the SA, SSA tax levy, which basically we're leaving the same as last year. Zero. A reminder on that, we decided to keep it in existence in case we ever decided to go back to it. But we're, so it's on, it's on the books, but we're not having zero dollars for it. Do we have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. 
discussion? Roll call. Trustees, at some, wait. at some point, I would like that um, SSA amended so that either we're going to get rid of it altogether or it's going to be something that includes the whole village. I'm really reluctant to have an SSA for just the residents of Grand Great Lake when, um, when everybody is benefiting um, from the things that are being done. short and long term plan item list. Any further discussion? Roll call. Trustees Darabowski? Aye. Tiffany? Aye. Duberstein? Aye. Barrett? Aye. Daly? Aye. And Washington? Aye. Okay, business item two is the tax levy ordinance for the fiscal year beginning May 1st, 2010, ending April 30th, 2011. We recently had a special meeting on this. Do we have a motion for approval? Second. Discussion? Roll call. Trustees Darnowski? Aye. Tiffany? Aye. Duberstein? Aye. Barrett? Aye. Daly? Aye. Um, I'd like to back up under the omnibus was the regular board meeting ordinance for the setting the dates. Uh -huh. I want to give that ordinance number out as 10-12-138. And then this ordinance is 10-12-139. Okay. Item number three is the Illinois Municipal League Risk Management Association Insurance Renewal. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Discussion? Roll call? Trustee Staranowski? Aye. Tiffany? Aye. Duberstein? Aye. Barrett? Aye. Daly? Aye. And Washington? Aye. Cross-connection control regulations and repealing section 1308 of the village code. That's a mouthful. This is the glamorous part of the job. <laughs> Do we have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Georgie and second. Okay. Any discussion? Yes. Can somebody put this in English for me, please? Greg. Greg, you want to put this in English? Basically, the, for every connection to the village water system, there has to be a backflow preventer. And so there are several types of backflow preventers, and this just requires that it's the uh, RPZ unit, which is basically the top of the water. Okay. So when we call it connected every time? Uh, businesses. Businesses. Discussion, roll call. Trustees Daranowski? Aye. Tiffany? Aye. Duberstein? Aye. Barrett? Aye. Daly? Aye. And Walkington? Aye. Thank you. The ordinance number 10 12 140. Okay, business item number five is adoption of the Village of Haynesville Emergency Operations Plan for 2010. Um, you did get a copy in your packets. Uh, there's an additional copy or revised copy that was passed out this evening. It reflects very minor changes, such as uh, corrections. Uh, it's still stated Knights nice Lumber. It now says Boys and, excuse me, it now says Russo Power Equipment. Um, Boys and was misspelled. Um, so it's pretty minor changes. Uh, but the plan in itself, is still the same. So if you had a chance to review it, uh, the fire departments have had a chance to review it, the Grays Lake Police Department has sat down and reviewed it. Um, uh, 
Jim Rock, our attorney, reviewed it, and the only additional thing that will be provided, and you'll get a copy of when they sign off on it, is there will be, uh, when we adopt this tonight, if we adopt it, of course, then Mike Beck will forward it to uh, Lake County for approval and also to the state, and then the different agencies involved will actually sign off on a sign-off sheet. So the school superintendent, the fire departments, and so on and so forth. So then you'll receive a copy of that sign-off page. That being said, do we have a motion for approval? Moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Trustee Sternoski? Aye. Tiffany? Aye. Huberstein? Aye. Barrett? Aye. Daly? Aye. And Washington? Aye. Okay, item six, sidewalk snow removal, and we're going to also explore the fire hydrant issue in here as well. Uh, most people are pretty good about shoveling, but unfortunately we have a few bad apples that don't want to shovel their sidewalks. Um, I have one resident that adamantly refuses to shovel the sidewalk even after discussing it with the homeowner. And their reasoning was they feel that if they shovel their sidewalk and somebody slips and falls, that they're liable. But that if they don't shovel and somebody slips and falls, they're not liable. So that's not 100% true, especially nowadays. But I'm going to let our attorney maybe make a few more comments on that. Actually, actually, that's not true at all. Okay. And in fact, um, there's there's a an act called the Snow and Ice Removal Act that specifically says that any owner, lesser occupant, or other person in charge of residential property uh, who removes or attempts to remove snow or ice from the sidewalks abutting the property shall not be liable for any personal injuries allegedly caused by the snowy or icy, icy condition of the sidewalk resulting from his or her acts or omissions. Unless the alleged conduct was misconduct was willful or wrong. So essentially, unless someone intentionally injured people by what they did in terms of removing snow and ice, this statute protects them from liability. In the case and when was that adopted? Uh, uh, I don't know that offhand. Okay. Um, it's been in place for a while. Well, one of the things we want to do is we're going to do an article that I'm going to give a copy, obviously, to that homeowner. But we're also going to do an article on that fact because I hope that puts that to rest so they can't use that excuse. Um, part of the problem is one of the homeowners lives on a corner lot, so there's considerable traffic, sidewalk traffic at a corner lot, and it also happens to be a bus stop. So I have sent out the public work superintendent. He has done some removal. He has also put salt down. But we're not going to have Public Works being responsible for clearing snow on sidewalks or even the bus stops. So, um, also, uh, <clears throat> the end of last winter or early spring, Trustee Tiffany had brought me a copy of a code or ordinance that he found in the uh, village of Wheeling. And uh, I informed that to our attorneys. And um, we also have one that our attorney provided for the packets, which is from Antioch. Uh, the only thing that concerned us about the one from Greenland is they actually make it a misdemeanor, which is a crime. That's a criminal charge. I don't know if we really want a criminal charge for not shoveling. But um, we do have to, to keep in mind, we, whatever we decide to do is enforcement. Enforcement becomes an issue. So. I'm going to open it to the floor, to the trustees, and, and get your thoughts and ideas and how you feel about this. What do we do um, when residents have their grass too tall? What, what consequences are there under those circumstances? Because I know they will give you warnings or something. They get a warning and then they, also, they get a, a fine. Ticket fine, $25, and it goes up after numerous charge, I 